Hey everybody, it's Matt Powers. I'm on a new site. So what am I going to do first? I'm going to observe the permaculture principle of observation. And what am I going to observe? I'm going to observe my roots on the weeds. Because it's the roots of our weeds that will tell us if we have native or muscular mycorrhizal fungi. So, and I don't need to even be, make it that complicated. You know, we don't need stain. We don't need to wash them. We can just slip them underneath the, the light and look at them. I'm just gonna cut one of those little roots off and we're gonna look at it, unadulterated. All right, so I'm gonna record it so that you can see this close up because we can see right here the train tracks of our vascular mycorrhizal fungi going around the cell right dead center. See more of that around the cell behavior. I damage the root right there. But you can see the hyphae running through it. You can see some spores, beautiful spores. And this color, this I've got actually the brightness on 18. Normally the brightness is, move it up. It's around 41 to 56, but even at 41, it's very bright, super bright. So, so the thing to recognize is that glow, there's hyphae and there's spores. And there's the behavior of it being a glomus species. So I think it's fair to say that we have glomus species, our vascular mycorrhizal fungi, that's partnering with this particular native weed. So, so this is that one. Now, um, all these things away one at a time and uh, you can use scissors the scissors can jettison things uh, razor blade is good you want to make sure that you're getting one that's not damaged and this is this plant this native weed all right so so I'm getting to see these things, and obviously some of them are going to be non-mycorrhizal, some of them are going to be mycorrhizal. I'm looking for evidence of partnership. And like immediately, I'm, you know, I'm struck by how different the expression is. How there's... It's hard to see. And if you're like, Matt, what's going on here? Um, that's the actual root right there, right? And so all parts of our muscular mycorrhizal fungi autofluoresce in this lighting. So when we go like this and turn on that light and we see very little reaction, that really tells us a few things. This might be non-mycorrhizal. This might be just starting its relationship in somewhere along this line, but it could be non-mycorrhizal. There is certainly root hairs. There's certainly some instances. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes. So here I would say there's an inoculation site beginning here. But it's also been very dry, so some plants are gonna go into a state where, where they're just waiting for the next rains. But even then, you're gonna see it as an inoculant. It's gonna look just like a mycorrhizal inoculant because root sections that are inoculated make the best inoculant. So, that's this weed. It looks really low in its mycorrhizal relationships uh, and it, or, but, but I mean, it's green, it's not, it's not senescing really. The ground is very dry, but, but that's, that's very interesting. Let's look at this grass, okay? All 
All right. And this one's kind of off the, the thing. Wow, look at how big, move this out of the way. Look at how big the root hairs are. Look how long they are. And then, holy cow, just unbelievable glow, right? So bright. This is a healthy plant. This is a healthy root. Wow. So this is an instance where I would be lowering the brightness. Let's go down to 18. Usually I'm up at 56. 56 would look like this. Blinding, right? So, so this is the thing a lot of people don't realize uh, that these things can be pretty obvious. You know, you need to be able to have it be bright in its expression. And, it, and obviously what happens as these things dry down and become more crystalline, they become brighter and brighter. So dried roots are gonna be like really, really bright as they dry, uh, uh, if they contain uh, phosphorus in them and mycorrhizal fungi. So it looks like there's hyaline mycorrhizal fungi and spores, beautiful. And, but, but it looks, it looks like, wow. It looks like the glow is making it harder to see, but it looks, uh, hyaline means transparent. But you can see it there and there. Yeah. And there. Incredible expression though. Really, really happy grass. You know, they are absolutely just pumping it out. You can see the darker hyphae that are older here. The cell size of your plant also affects the, like how it looks and how it expresses. See that? Right there was super bright. That could be crystal forming on the surface or that could be actively working right there. But you can see the hyphae running along here. You can see spores. You can see septa. This better visualization up here. You can see it here. And obviously, just looking at this plant, Rhizophagy is happening really well. The roots are really, really happy, thick. You know, rhizophagy is definitely happening. We see those root hairs. So there's mycorrhizal fungi there. There's some non-mycorrhizal or low mycorrhizal potentially. Uh, I would want to. I would. I would want to take this this really dry root here, and and. and find one that's not as dry and uh, examine it. Because, yeah, it's green on top, but the bottom is very woody and very dry. Well, so is this, but it was very obviously inoculated. So, so this could be potentially non-mycorrhizal or low mycorrhizal. This is what we do. We look to see, do we need to add mycorrhizal fungi? Do we, it, would, would it will be there in the soil? We're going to be able to establish plants with native arbusco mycorrhizal fungi because it's there. We've been able to verify, we've been able to see it. This is the problem with so much of the work people do with mycorrhizal fungi. They do it and don't even look. They don't even check to make sure that it's glowing, make sure that it's fully glowing, like the whole root's glowing, and to make sure that there's hyphae, there's spores, there's cycling, and checking the next year to make sure that it comes back. That, because, you know, things happen, you know, a neighbor sprays, you know, uh, maybe someone takes over management and, uh, or you're moving on to a place and what was done has inhibited or killed the fungi. This is wonderful because obviously they took care of this land before us and uh, there's our vascular mycorrhizal fungi. That is native, that is wild. And we're gonna be partnering with that 
I'm gonna be using mycorrhizal fungi with different things as I, as I do it, but I don't feel the need to run out and buy anything because it's already in my soil. It's already partnering with the plants that are here and we could take native roots, chop them up and put them on our seeds as inoculant and have that be a way that we pass it on to the next generation. It's incredible. So if you want to be able to look at your roots, check out your weeds and read them and see if mycorrhizal fungi is regenerative already in your soil to save you money, to partner with the native Arbusco mycorrhizal fungi, then check out the work I'm doing with regenerative soil microscopy. We have a new course starting on Monday, September 15th. There's the book, the best-selling book. Check it out, Regenerative Soil Microscopy. You can get it on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or for me at thepermaculturestudent.com. It is on sale with free shipping. So check that out. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. And keep observing nature because that's the ultimate teacher. That's, that's always going to give you the answer. And, and it's our ability to observe and to accept that feedback loop and understand the cycles and know where we are in the cycles, our context is critical. And that's what we learn in regenerative soil and regenerative soil microscopy. So I hope that you join us. Course begins Monday. There's incredible discounts, a raffle on a $2,400 microscope. We have amazing bonuses and even payment plans. So check it out, regeneratesoilmicroscopy.com. I'll see you there. What if you could verify if your compost was actually doing its job? What if you could verify if the inoculants, the mycorrhizal inoculants, the biofertilizers are actually worth the money spending on them? It is all possible. And it's all things you can learn in the Regenerative Soil Microscopy 20 week online course that is starting this fall. If you wanna learn how to not just understand your soil, but to see that the things you're doing are actually working, that the money that you're gonna spend or, or have spent was worth it so you don't get fooled again. This is the pathway. We need holistic testing, we need holistic microscopy, and we need to combine them in a new methodology, regenerative soil microscopy. I hope you join us. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively. I'll see you soon.